Hello. So, and today, I'm going to try to get a good amount of stuff done, get it ready to almost start. So, something I need is transmission fluid. Almost all the fluids are in. Well, <laughs> I say that, but oil is in. Next is just coolant. But I don't need that to start. But I do want to have transmission fluid. I have no idea how much is in there. I barely have a quart. So, I just made this. Let's see if we have enough trans fluid. If I do, that'll save me big time. There's a drain plug here. I left mine loose. Drain plugs out. There's fluid coming out of that, so that's a great sign. That's awesome, but I don't trust it. So I'm gonna put my funnel in and see what happens. Well, this bad boy has transmission fluid. That's awesome. And it makes sense because it had the axles when I got the car and when i took off the axle i didn't really see it leak so that's why i assumed it had no fluid but cool it has fluid something i'm gonna do right now is shove this harness in the little hole and something real quick i added a ground from the power steering pump to sock towers and i painted it black so it doesn't look so ugly but let's shove this thing that hole right there beat it there you go starting to go in look at that and then this thing, I have no idea. I think it goes like, oh, okay, that's a seal. But yeah, just keep feeding it through. Now you can go inside of the cabin and yank it through. But you gotta make sure it's not gonna get caught on anything here. I think we're good to go on this side. I just pulled it and look at that. Now I have all these plugs. Well, something I did is I added a few grounds. I added this guy from the subframe to the slate cylinder bolt, add one here on the little clutch reservoir to this little bracket on the head and then one on the power steering pump to the strut tower. So added three ground, that should be a good amount. But something I found out that I didn't know, so you, oh my, something I found out is, so you wanna use an EP3 or a hybrid civic radiator because it has that sensor. I didn't know that i never noticed that the d17 or stock radiator didn't have that temp sensor so you do want to use this radiator and also it relocates where the radiator hoses go for the top for at least if there's something i could do over again it would be i wish i did this a while ago while the engine was out but take the fuse box cover off undo the the charge harness take this little this backboard off all i did was i just Squeeze the center, and it pops off. What I found helpful is undo both of the plugs. So the brown one, just leave it to the side. So there's two green ones. The very first one, and then three down, there's another one. You don't want to do the first one. You want to do the one that's going down to the third. So what you're going to do here is, you're going to put a long wire. So you're basically extending this. You're making it go on the green side of that sensor. And the black one is just ground, so you can place it anywhere. And for this, you don't want to use butt connectors. It's not recommended. So solder this bad boy up. I'm going to cut it up and extend it how I can. I'll show you what I do. Here's a little update. I cut that green wire in half. Now this is nice and open and exposed. And I can solder all these guys together. Time to show you what I did. So if you have a long cable, like a long wire, then it'll be very easy, but since I don't have much many wires left, I have to literally find some more plugs that I have laying around, cut them, and extend them. So all I really did was I unplugged the plug, and I extended the two wires. I extended the crap out of them a good amount. So you want one to go to ground. This one I want to place right here because there's a lot of grounds. See all these grounds? So I wanted this guy to be able to go with those grounds. And then for the power, well, I made it long enough so I can have enough wiggle room to play with the fuse box. So you have one long wire, you'll be set, and it'll be very simple. But if you don't, you've got to extend some, like what I had to do. It was pretty annoying, but put in some work. And then for here, this had to extend. So as you can see, I cut these, extended it, and left one pretty... So if you see it, I extended it. So I cut this blue guy a lot and left some copper left. 
So I was able to put this guy in. And that's how I made my power. And I made the very end green, so it can just go along with that. For my ground, I was able to find one of these. I'm gonna electrical tape it up and make it look clean. Electrical tape this little three-way. Now you can start plugging it all back together and cleaning up the wiring. And we got the radiator temp sensor hooked up. We have the looms on. I put a zip tie here to make it look clean. That doesn't look bad. It's also running where the charge harness would go. Snakes in here. That looks beautiful. Now I made it a little extra long, but that's, to me, I don't see it bad because I can get creative and like zip tie in different places. And then for the ground, snakes through here. Ground is on. That's protected. Sensor's fine. The wiring for the engine bay is basically done. Interior, this all I got to do now to hook up the ECU and the harness adapter. So I'm gonna grab that real quick. I didn't think I'd see the day, but finally whipping these out. This is the new swap harness. Look pretty damn cool. So this guy, we won't be using the fan switch because we already hooked it up from the fuse box to the sensor directly. Now, if you want, you could hook it up to this. I'm not sure if this goes to the fuse box or to the sensor itself, or maybe it can go to either or, but from what I heard is you don't have to use this. So we can skip this guy. Goodbye, little D17. I did my first head gasket on this engine. This was my first front wheel drive transmission I ever pulled. I did it last night. Just like that, engine is sold. And the guy I sold it to was a big Honda guy. And we were talking about Hondas and stuff for quite a bit. So here we have the K-Tune harness adapter. This is for the O2 sensor. Well, you have your engine harness in here. Now you can shove the O2 sensor harness through the hole too. And another thing I recommend, do not put this ring on yet. That white ring, it's a little hard to take off. I could not fit this through that white ring. I had to undo the ring. Now I have the O2 plug. And now you're able to play with it and make it go through. Just like that. I don't know about this one. This one you might have to leave out. I won't make the O2 plug go through, through this rubber boot because that's like glued on there or something. And you can't really open it. It's to prevent dirt, debris, and water from going into the cabin. But that's fine. One little wire so didn't affect it too much. Hello. So today we're going to try to start the car. So right now I just need to put in a few hoses. So I here have a power steering one. It also says for heater hose, but I'm using a 5 8 Using this 5 8 hose for the power steering pump, and it's gonna snake all the way through here. I'm gonna put my power steering reservoir on this side because there's no room here. I don't really wanna place it under here because I don't know if it'll run right. So I think there's a good spot for it somewhere down here. But what I'll do first is I'll test fit the intake to make sure that it won't interfere. And also, this very long one that's supposed to go here, I can cut it basically in half, so it'll fit perfectly where it's supposed to. I just had to buy this one, and I did have to also buy a new heater hose. This one is 3 fourths. I need it for this one over here. This one just does not fit through, no matter how hard I try. And I just don't see it worth it to try to make it work. Now, if you have an adapter, like a metal T that converts it from, you know, smaller size to bigger, perfect. Use that. I don't have one. I couldn't find one. So I made a last minute decision to just buy a bigger hose to fit on this guy. And then over there, I think first thing I'm going to do is install this heater hose. I'll let you know how it goes. So for the heater hose, you need to undo this clamp that clamp here and it is really damn hard to get there so i refuse to undo that what i'm gonna do is there's a split here i'm gonna cut this and i'll make an adapter that goes from smaller to a little bigger i already have this heater hose here and i did buy this long ass one but if i don't need to use it i won't i'm gonna try to get an adapter so here's what i did i found out that a 13 millimeter socket fits in there. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take this with me. I'm gonna go to Home Depot 
And I'm gonna try to find a little pipe that I can use that can shove in there and make my own little adapter. Because this also fits in here. It has a nice fit to it. I know the host clamp, it'll fit perfect. And then it also fits in here. It's a little bit tight, but it actually goes in. It will not go into this one because it's pretty damn hard. Hello, it's been a long day. So when I Home Depot, I got these fittings. So one is gonna be for the power steering. So from here to connect these two lines, I got one more fitting for the coolant. I don't wanna use that long one. That long one I have, I can return it to Advanced Auto. And I have this one. Here's the fitting I got. It's uh, it's a one inch to three, four. That'll be going here. And I can cut this and basically have like two heater hoses. So that's what I'll be doing. That's what I'll look like when I'm done. I think I'll be there. This one right here will be connected here. So, update. Here's one of them. I used one of those chrome hose clamps and then an OEM one. And then, dude, check that out. The power steering reservoir is tucked so freaking good. Couldn't be happier about that. So I used the stock one and I got an adapter to hook up to, to there. It snakes like behind, well, under the fuse box, behind the engine, tucked back there. You can see it's nice and shiny. It goes, it goes under the reservoir. The original one that's under steering rack, I just cut it, looped it up into the reservoir. And then for mocking purposes, I got the intake on. It looks pretty terrible. It's not, it's not how it's gonna sit, but so tight. But I just put it on just to hook up the temp sensor. Um, that's still gonna be open. That should be fine. But right now, it should be ready for the first start. I'm gonna hook up the ECU real quick. So I haven't installed anything for the harness adapter. Um, all I really did was I just shoved this through the firewall. But here are the plugs. So we have two of them from the engine harness. And then this one is for the, the interior stuff, I'm very sure. And something I found out is, if you read this, so all the wires that you have to connect, so these are all for your O2 sensor to work, your primary O2. So you don't need to hook up basically any of these wires started. From what i see so like the o2 heater that's for the o2 sensor and then these i get these also for the o2 sensor i thought of something for the ecu but according to the to the manual so this one for the o2 sensor relay this one is for the o2 sensor relay too and also primary o2 you don't have to worry about connecting these to start it all you really need to do is just there's two plugs for the car only one plug plugs into one. So if this one doesn't fit, then you gotta put this one in there. And then the one from the opposite side connects to that. And there you go. It just plugs right in. This guy just plugs right in. That's it. You don't have to worry about these right now. We'll hook them up later. I just wanna start it to be honest for the video. But then in the future, we will hook up the 12 volt ignition and the constant 12. And then that one pin out, which we gotta figure out which one it is. All right, there's three plugs. We have the ECU. There's also three plugs. Those plugs will only connect to one place. I'm gonna put that in real quick. Voila, those are plugged in. Harness adapter is on. It looks like such a mess right now, but it is. That's hooked up. We have our keys. We're in neutral. We'll put the key right on the side here. I think we're about to give it a start. So here's the setup. We got jumper cable running to here. So positive, obviously, on the charge harness. And then ground, we just have it on that engine mount bolt. What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna prime it, make sure there's no leaks and stuff. Wow, this is crazy. So I'm gonna prime it like three times. All right, let's check for any leaks. I don't see anything there. And that. Oh, shoot. All right. This is actually freaking leaking. Oh, that sucks. Good thing I didn't start it. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to tighten the piss out of this right now. Another try. Let's see if it's leaking. Um, 
still wet, but I don't know if that's from before. So I'm gonna clean it real quick. And I just dried it up and I'm gonna prime it again. It feels dry. Yep, it feels dry. No leaks. And I tightened the piss out of them. Now for my own safety, I'm gonna put this rag under there anyway because I don't wanna risk it. All right, now I'm not gonna start it right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it a few times to get some oil flowing in there. So. Oh man. Ooh, it cranked. And batteries low.